Anthony Vincent. Mm-hmm. I got to tell you, when I I did an interview with him, which was the first thing he did yeah, I heard that. a few months ago. Mm-hmm. And he was very late to the interview, and I was very rushed, and I did not nearly have the time that I expected and was right. told I would have to kind of pull things apart and get into it. It was very much like up against the end of the show, and it was you know, right. not what I wanted to do. But one of the things in retrospect listening to that interview that a lot of people pointed out to me is the one he was in a mode, and that was the first. He's done some interviews since, but that was the first thing he's done. he did in first, whatever, 20 yeah. years. That's correct. More, yeah. More, more. And uh, he was in that at that time in a mode of like love and forgiveness of everybody, right? Even Gene and Paul, you know, the right. lawsuits as well. You know, Jeannie and Paul. Uh, before he didn't say it by name, but he said the one guy he seemed to have an issue with was you and Paul. Yeah, and Paul. Yeah, yeah Paul, who he called Mean Mister Mustard. Yeah, yeah, Mean Mister Mustard. I was going to get a Mean Mustard uh, T-shirt made. When I went to see Kiss <laughs> not too long ago just to get a smile <laughs> smile out of Paul. You know, look. What do you think and, that's and, about, I mean, man? Because I would love to have jumped in and said, "Hey, what's go-, you know? I've known you forever. You're a great guy. What's this about?" But uh, but I don't. I, I didn't have the time, and I, it took mm-hmm. me a second to even process where who he was exactly talking about there but clearly it was you it in was retrospect me, yeah. what is it was it because you didn't stay with him do you I think i don't i don't think that vinny didn't uh i don't think he really liked me as as the singer from the very beginning in my opinion um i was it was actually uh it was a last minute thing they had uh, alice cooper tour and i think it was a month and a half before robert said he wasn't going to do it um, there was a couple singers that were kind of up for that gig at that point. Um, uh, and uh, basically, it came down to me. Uh, Mike Varney was uh, working with Rudy Sarzo and Tony McAlpine and Tommy Aldrich had a group that they were putting together, which is called Driver. And I said to the guys, I go, look, if I'm not going to do this, I'm going to go check it out and go maybe play with Driver or something like that. And then the label said, let's just take the kid. This is, you know, and I was 21 years old at the time. I mean, which is just crazy. So I ended up, you know, going out to L.A., dyeing my hair blonde, teasing it up to the moon. And then, you know, my guitar's back in the stand. And then all of a sudden I'm opening for Alice Cooper, which, you know, going from a guitar player, singer to just a singer was crazy. So I think that a good a good portion of that is is it wasn't what he was expecting for a singer i think that he has in his mind of the perfect person but he'll never have that perfection of who he wants to sing you know he's just never happy he's just not happy with anybody that he works with i think did you in my opinion did you well yeah i mean that sounds like a fair assessment mm-hmm. but when you came into that situation did you what was it uh did you sense i know it ended badly but was there tension at the start, did you not feel I, very welcome at the there start? Was, there was one time, and, and you know, Bobby spoke about that in his book, and it was one of those things. I it was one time we were we were opening for uh, for Alice Cooper, and it was the the intro tape was rolling, and Vinny turns to me and said, "You know, Mark, you really sounded like garbage last night. If you don't pull it together, you're not going to be in the next record." And then. We started. Then we were out on stage. And, you know, there's two different things that people would react to. Some people say, I don't need this. And then there's the fighters who will go out there and say, you know what? Uh-uh. And I went out there and I'm a fighter. So I went out there and performed more, did more, you know, as a singer. And I think that I fought my way through to where Vinny accepted me at some point as a singer on that second record where he, he seemed okay during the that whole process he was he was happy with the record but in hindsight again robert had his tonality i had my tonality we're you know it's a different thing we're two different people you know mm-hmm. i wish him well and i've i've said that over the years but you know he's he's got a problem with me he's got a problem with paul and you know i really don't care yeah. you know, it's irrelevant to me you know my 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 royalty statements say something totally different than vinnie vincent invasion you know well you mean meaning you don't make any money from that yeah, like, you know, three bucks or something. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, you know, in the scope of it all, it's not even it's not even worth my time. What but, do you think? What? Why do you think that he, and I know you don't have a relationship with him anymore, but and you, you haven't talked to him in, in a long time, but why do you think he chose now to, like, just even that interview, come up and do signings and try to get out there? You think it's just money? You think he I just think, needs money? I think he needs money, but I think that, I think he wants to be accepted. You know, look, in this side of it, 
you know, he was a guitar player in Kiss. I think that he did help Kiss a lot in that time. But, you know, Gene and Paul always had their thumb on it. They were always in control of, of, of steering that boat. You know, I don't think he went in there and said, I'll take the helm. He's not that guy. He, he had some good songs that I think that those guys said, hey, these are good songs. Let's make it ours. Um, and I think that was really what he brought to the table. But, you know, it's not, it's not a talent show. It's about the songs. When you listen to Sirius Radio and you're listening to Her Nation, for instance, those songs make you feel good because it reminds you of the good times and it reminds you of where you were and, the, and you realize that the music is positive and fun. It's not about, and then this solo for 40 minutes is just amazing. Right. It's, it's not about that. You know, as a guitar player, you might be able to take it for a couple of minutes, but bottom line is it's, it's the songs and, and the soundtrack of our life. That's a key point with music. But there's got to be something, and I'm, you know, I'm not a psychiatrist and I'm not trying to get you to be one, but there's got to be something deeper going on with him because even just in his return back, there's been three events, it seems like now, that he has canceled, you know, and, yeah. and even I heard, a, you know, he's done interviews and, and he, he is, you know, steadfast, like, how dare you even assume I could cancel this when he's got a history of canceling, right. and yet he cancels again. Right. So, I mean, there's some disconnect going on. I don't know. It, it always was, and I think that there's some people in this industry that need people to handle them to events and handle them into to go play a show or to go do that. And I think that when, when uh, you know, we were out of the band, there was no other records. There wasn't anything else that this guy did. There wasn't any other recordings that, that I'm aware of that, that are out there that, that he saw through. Meanwhile, you know, we're continuing to make music and go out there and play. And, you know, you have to be a certain type of person to want to get up at 3 in the morning and catch a flight and go do another show the next day. You've got to love it. It's, it's not just money. You've got to love doing it. Otherwise, you wouldn't do it. And I, I have a theory, too, that, and I've seen this a lot with guys, that you never stop making music. No. You never stop. You never, I mean, all of us, 90s, lean years, whatever it may have been, everybody, a, a lot of people still plowed through, figure out a way to make it work. But there's a lot of guys that have checked out and would check out for 20, 15, 25 years. And then all of a sudden, we both know, as you just alluded to with royalties, they start to dry up. They're not once they want what they once were. Right. Suddenly, you need to get back out there and work. And then you stick your head out there a little bit, and you're like, oh, wow, I'm going to get back into it. And then you find out what the business is now, and you have no ability to adapt. It's, and it, Well, it's work. It's very hard it, to dive back work. in when you've been on the shelf for 20, 30 That's years. That's right. And it's a different dynamic. Different, totally. And you don't have, you know... 15 road crew guys you get in there and you get hands on and 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 uh you know it's it's about again it's a bottom line is it's about entertainment this is about the entertainment industry not the talent show yeah and i think that you know it's, it's about getting the music out there if it's new music it should be as good as if not better than the music you did before but the bottom line is is i went and saw paul mccartney in 1995 with with strum and i i remember he played the he played the wings he played the beatles and he goes i got a new one for you and the whole place sat down and i thought wow this is one of the best songwriters one of the biggest iconic people in music and people just sat down and there is the reason why Slaughter hasn't made a new record in 20 years.